looking at the uniform distribution, um, this is another continuous distribution for us, like the normal. So we need values that are not counting values, but things like weights and times. Now, it's sometimes known as a rectangular distribution, and that's because it's got a constant probability. So if you look at the shape of it, it does end up looking like a rectangle, and it's got a flat type, meaning the constant, the probability is always going to be constant. So if this is our probability function, that probability there is constant for all those values between the minimum and maximum value possible. And maybe in this case we'll call that like 8 and 14 seconds, just so we have some numbers to play with. Now the random value will have the minimum and maximum value, and um, the probability can be found by finding the area of the distribution that we're looking for. And what I mean by that is finding the area of a particular region you're interested in. So for instance, if we wanted to find the area of that part of the rectangle, let's say that's between um, 9 and 11, then I'll need to calculate the actual area of this rectangle. So there's a couple of things we need to do to be able to figure that out. But first, I'll mention to you guys the conditions here. So make sure you know these, like you need to know for binomial and normal and Poisson. We need to have continuous data. And again, those are things like weights and times. Now, the distribution needs to be approximately rectangular in shape. I guess that's what I mean, in shape. Or in a situation where they only tell us the minimum possible value or the maximum po and the maximum possible value. So you know the min and the max, but you don't know the shape in between. So you can kind of assume that it would be normal if you or be uniform if you have to. Now our formula, these are not given. They're just little things to kind of help us figure out what it is. So a few things that we'll need to calculate are the height of this total rectangle. We need to find h, that height there. And once you've got the height, you can calculate the um, area of the part that you're looking for. Now I've got height written as 1 over b minus a in brackets. This would be a, the minimum, and this would be b, the maximum. So if you wanted to, another way you could write that as 1 over max minus min, if intuitively that's an easier way to think about doing it. And that comes out of a derivation for the area of the rectangle. Remember that area of this whole rectangle will be equal to the height times the total width, which is b minus a, from end to end, that total distance. And in this case, I know that the total area has to equal 1 for a probability distribution. So if I want to find h, it's going to be 1 divided by b minus a, because I know the total area has to add up to 1 underneath this entire thing. So that's where the formula for the height comes from. And in this case, if I wanted to know the probability, like I'm asking here, um, I can go about doing that. So as an example, the probability that x is between 9 and 11, I need to calculate the area of this green rectangle. So that's going to be the height times 9 minus sorry, not 9 minus 11, other way around, don't want a negative number, 11 minus 9. So that's going to be my height times 2. So first thing I need to do is actually find my height. Now the height here is again 1 over the max minus the min, so that's 14 minus 8 in brackets. That's the same as 1 over 6, which is the same as 0 0.167, sorry, 1667. So that's my height. So I'm going to have 0 0.1667 times 2, because 11 minus 9 is 2. And that again is the area of this shape in here. That's the area there, and that will be equal to my total probability. So this ends up being 0 0.333. I've got a 0 0.33 chance of this phone call, for instance, or whatever it is, lasting between 9 and 11 seconds. So that's the basic of how these formula work and why we need to know them. So to use these, the things, key things that you're going to need to know would be the minimum value, obviously, 
and the maximum value because once you know those you can calculate your height and you're away with things and your expected value is going to be the midpoint of the range of the values that are possible and um, I'm going to change this up a little bit so that it says bracket b minus a bracket divided by 2 and then plus a again you've got to add that back on to um, the minimum to get the value so if we work through this just the b minus a that's going to be 14 minus 8 divided by 2 14 minus 8 is 6 divided by 2 is 3 but I need to add that back on to the minimum because 3 is way down here that's not the midpoint we're trying to find the point in between these so 3 plus 8 is equal to 11 as you can see I didn't exactly draw my shape to scale here so that's the midpoint between 8 and 14 and that will be equal to your mean or your expected value so just to recap a few key points for us the distribution is modeled by a rectangle in shape the total area will be 1 and we need to use this to find the height of the rectangle and our probabilities will be found by calculating the area of the rectangles that we're looking for and another one to keep in mind is that because this is a continuous random variable the probability of having an exact value um, is going to be zero. You can't have exactly, for instance. So in the example above, the probability of, call that x, x is equal to 10 will be zero. We can't have exactly 10 seconds. Probability for exactly 10 seconds will give us zero. So let's take a look at one more example and I'll walk it through right from the top so you guys can kind of see the process on these. Anna babysits for some friends regularly when they go out for a meal. The length of time that she is required for babysitting can be modeled by a continuous uniform distribution. So here they're telling us exactly that we can use the uniform. The minimum time she will have to babysit is 90 minutes and the maximum time is 140. The graph of the distribution looks like this. So I have my min time and my max time. Now the first thing I'm going to need to do before I calculate any of the probabilities that they're going to ask for is find the area. I'm sorry, find the height. So we're going to look for the look to calculate the probability that she um, will be required on one occasion between 100 and 120 minutes. And again the very first thing we're going to do is find the height. And remember that comes because the total area of the whole thing is equal to 1. Now you can derive that, or you can just go straight to the little formula, 1 over, you can think about it as max minus min if you want, or 1 over b minus a, if you want to think about it that way. But here we have 1 over max, which is 140, minus 90. That's going to get me 140 over 50, which is equal to 0 0.02, and that is equal to my height very first thing that I'm going to have to do. Second thing is going to be find width of desired values. So here I'm looking to go somewhere between 100 and 120 minutes. So let's put that on here approximately 100 and 120 minutes. So I want to calculate the probability that she has to work and babysit sometime between those values. So the width for this particular case is going to be 20, 120 minus 100, which is equal to 20 minutes. Again, that's trying to calculate the total width of the box we're looking for here, the ones we're actually interested in. So now we have height and width height times width will give me the area of the rectangle so that's my third step find the area and in this case it's going to be height times width which is going to be 0 0.02 times 20 and that is equal to 0 0.4 so the probability that she works between 100 and 120 minutes on a night working for these people is 0 0.4. And just as a little side example of interest if needed, 
if we are looking for the mean time, which is thinking back to our expected value ideas, that's going to be the midpoint of whole the whole rectangle. So I've got to find what's halfway between 90 and 140. So to do that I can go max minus min divided by 2 and then plus it on to the minimum again. So 140 minus 90 divided by 2 plus 90 140 minus 90 is 50, divided by 2 is 25, so 25 plus 90 will get us to 115 minutes. That would be the mean time. So it's just the midpoint of this entire surface here, of this entire distribution. So in the next videos, um, I'll look at a merit example and a few more, uh, at least one more achieved example as well if you need it.